All right, so I've got our application Doc Defender open here. And what we want to try and understand is how methods behave inside of a Meteor application. Uh, and this is important because this is going to give us a foundation to, to frame our thoughts around why we would even need to write security methods in the first place. Uh, or maybe not security methods, but why we would want to add any level of security to our methods. And so to do this, I've already opened it over here. I've got the view source for the page. Uh, if you do this, I'm in Chrome. If you do control click and then view page source, you'll get this as well. And now I'm going to refresh this. But what we see when we load this up is the underlying HTML and JavaScript files, as well as CSS being loaded for the entire application. Now you'll see something different in production. Meteor will actually minify and concatenate all of your JavaScript files into just one file. But what we're looking at here still applies. Uh, it's a little more garbled, but it, it's still a similar issue. So keep this in mind. Uh, even if you were to deploy your application to something like Galaxy and then you looked at this uh, view source page and you saw only one file, what we're going to talk about still applies. So what we want to understand is why do we care about security? Why is this important? And the answer lies in this app.js file. So app.js is all of our application code for the client side. That's not in a package. So you can see here we've got packages slash and then each of the packages that we load uh, but then app.js includes all of our client side code so if we go into app.js we can see we just get all the source of our client side files now you may not have seen this before and this is important to know uh, if you have any secure values or any code that deals with security on the client specifically it will show up in here. So be very careful about what you load into the client side because the user can see it. Uh, keep that in mind. What we care about are methods. So if we go back to base and we look, I've got in Atom opened up. I have a few different files opened up. One that I have is a module called document editor. And this is the module that we use to actually update and edit documents inside of base. Uh, and you'll see this later in the tutorial. We'll talk about how it works and see how it plays in, into all the forms that we have. Um, but what we want to pay attention to is how we're importing something into this file. And specifically, we're looking at line 5 here. Upsert document is a method. This is a validated method. So if we go to the API directory and imports here and go to documents, and then we're going to go to methods.js, we can see we've got upsert document here, upsert document here. That's the same one. So what we're doing is we're importing this function. So lines 8 to 24, we're importing that onto the client. Now, when we import that, what we're saying is we want to load the entirety of this file onto the client. So even though a method is executed on the server, we load it onto the client so that we can call it from the client. Now what does that mean? So in Meteor we have this concept of latency compensation and that's where all the magic plays into Meteor. If you uh, make a change on the client as a user, so pretend that you're a user of your own application, uh, you make a change and it appears almost instantaneously. How does that happen? That happens because of latency compensation. So in Meteor what we're working with is a fake or stub call to our method on the client. So by stub call, what we mean is Meteor pretends or simulates a call to the method. But what actually happens is we, we pretend to do it. The user sees what should be the end result on the client. But then on the server, we actually try to call the method. And the way that we get access to that latency compensation is by loading our method on both the client and the server. So even though we are loading it onto the client, Meteor is smart enough that behind the scenes it's just doing this as a stub. It's not actually performing the task. Instead, what it's doing is on the server when we call this, it's actually calling the method and trying to perform the code that's inside. So simulation on the client, actual on the server. What ends up happening is if the server passes, meaning there's no errors, there's no issues, or there's no security that stops it, the method passes on the server and the change that the user saw next to instantaneously on the client stays. If for some reason the server fails, the client is reverted. So the change is just automatically kicked back. 
And so the only way we can get that latency compensation is if we load the method on both the client and the server. Fair enough. Now, how does that play into our security? So we've got this method here. We're loading it on both the client and the server. So if you take a guess, what's happening? Well, it's likely that because we're importing this on the client, we see this quite literally on the client. So if we jump back to our view source here and we do a find and replace, so I've already been playing around and searching for this, you can see var upsert document new validated method. Mind you, we've defined that in our API directory. So what we're looking for is this. And technically this code we're trying to run in a server context. And if we jump down to startup server api.js, we can see that we're importing that. And mind you, this is server. So this is loaded on the server, but because we're doing an import upsert document from our methods file here, it's loading on the client as well. So back in our source, if we look for this, uh-oh, notice we're in the browser right now. So we can see this method definition along with all of our authorization code. Now we haven't written this yet. We'll get into this in the rest of the tutorial, but you can see, we can see the entire method. Uh, the good news, again, is that Meteor will only run this as a simulation on the client and not actually. It only runs it actually on the server. So keeping that in mind, this isn't the end of the world, but it's not good because anybody who wants to try and run an attack against our application can easily jump in and say, oh, well, I'll just try and reverse engineer your code. So this is where security comes in. We need to make sure that even though they can see this, and again, they can only see this if we're trying to get access to latency compensation and we explicitly import our methods onto the client. Um, if they can see this, they can't really get past it. It's, it's ambiguous enough. And we can see here, again, we'll explain this uh, in a little bit, but is authorized user ID document ID. There's, there's not much of a way to hack this. It's not really clear. Uh, and we'll go into that in a little bit, but just know that, okay, this is loaded on the client if we import it. And just to make sure that's clear, we have a few files in the application, actually just two, uh, where this is imported. So to make that clear, let's go ahead and comment those out real quick. And so we'll comment out upsert document here in document editor JS. Again, this is in our modules directory. And then in view document, this component, React component, is loading it as well. Um, and we're not concerned with the specific method, just that it's loading anything from that file. So anything gets loaded from that file, that file's contents are accessible on the client. So we've commented out both. And if we jump back to the browser now, the Meteor is going to update. So we're going to refresh our view source page. And then we're going to open app.js back up. And now we're going to try and find that same thing. And you'll notice that now, because we removed that import, we can't actually get used to it. So keep that in mind. Uh, and your, your last question may be, well, how do I call a method if I can't import it into the client? Well, we can define server-only methods and still call them from the client, but the code won't be loaded onto the client. And that would look something like, if we go back to documenteditor.js, here, because we're using the validated method syntax to call our method, we have to import it, but say we had a server-only method, we could simply do meteor.call and then pass our method name. And by method name, we mean, uh, if we go back here into methods, this name right here. So if we were to call documents.upsert directly, we would get the same results, but this code would only run on the server. So we wouldn't have to worry about um, the underlying method being exposed to the client. So in your own application, keep this in mind. This is very important. Uh, it can keep you out of trouble sometimes if your code uh, is very, very uh, secure, needs to be very secure. So keep this in mind, this is very important. Uh, we'll keep going in the rest of the tutorial and see how we can implement some security to, to circumvent this and, and keep us out of harm's way.